That's right, it's January 6th, the most violent and despicable attack on America ever perpetrated. They say 9-11 was bad, but no. January 6th makes 9-11 look like a, a Sunday at church picnic. Oh, yes. That's right. We got a list of uh, crimes over here on Yahoo News. Not many sites will detail the various offensive committed against the Republic on that day. Now I hear you asking, well, CNN tells you everyone committed insurrection. You know, they're trying to burn down the building. They're trying to kill Nancy Pelosi. Oh, they were trying to take AOC hostage. And in her own words, every, you know, every Republican wants to have sex with me. No one wants to go near those teeth. Jesus Christ, I would, I'm getting Bobbit vibes just from thinking about her teeth. Let's read the article here. As the world watched the events of January 6th, right, at the Capitol unfold, eagle-eyed observers spotted a tiny Tennessee-shaped patch on one of the reporter's jackets. I'm sorry, rioter's jackets. Oh, I'm sure reporters were there, you know. But the truth of the matter is that most of these people were actually turned in by their friends and family. So we can read down here that there was a guy identified as then 30-year-old Eric Munchen, Munchel, was photographed carrying zip-tie restraints as he climbed over stairs in the Senate gallery. He quickly earned a name, Zip-Tie Guy, on social media as people worked to identify him and provide tips to the FBI. The image of Munchel, among others, became emblematic of that deadly day that stunned and horrified many around the globe. That's not wrong. My aunt won't shut up about it. She really thinks it's like the worst thing ever. It's kind of comical. Not everyone's going to agree about what really happened that day. I have my opinions. I don't think it's that bad. I think we showed the government that the people still have power. And if there really was any fraudulent activity in the election, which I can't say one way or another, I'll probably get this video taken down if I side too hard on one direction. But ask yourself this. Why haven't the uh, January 6th committee, why haven't the Democrats investigated the election results in numerous states like Arizona, Nevada, New Hampshire. Yeah, that's right. They don't want the truth getting out, and they don't want to justify why these people took action in their own hands. So it says here a year later, more than 700 people from 45 states have been charged with federal crimes in connection to the events. They say federal crimes. Not one of them has been charged with insurrection. I believe John Schaefer, um, what is he, the guitarist of uh, Iced Earth? I think he's the most high-profile person who was arrested. Other than that, I don't even think he was charged with a felony. I believe he used bear mace on someone, maybe an officer. A lot of these listed are people shoving or attempting to fight officers. Yes, it's felony misconduct, but it's not insurrection. And we can read here that the defendants, most of them linked to the volunteer stater men. They range in age from 20-year-old Kentucky man Nicholas Brokoff to... Clifford Meter, 66, of Knoxville. Now, again, this article is heavily uh, focused on Tennessee, and that's fine, but you'll see that numerous people were from other parts of the country. You'll see that listed below, but here we go. Ronald Colton McAbee, then 27, is among seven charged in a brutal assault on officers on the Capitol's Lower West Terrace. A now former Williamsville County Sheriff Deputy McAbee attended the rally while on temporary disability leave from work. Oh, so I'm sure he's charged with that, you know, defrauding his uh, disability. But let's see what it says here. He was shown on police body cam footage carrying a baton and swinging at officers while wearing gloves with reinforced metal knuckles. All right, I believe that is a felony. You can't have brass knuckles in any of the 50 states as far as I'm aware. Charging documents say he was also allegedly involved in grabbing and holding down an officer while he kicked and punched him. Yeah, that's pretty bad, but again, I think only one officer died that day, and that was embolism that ruptured in his brain the family actually had to come out and dispel the rumors that cnn and numerous other agencies the news we're talking about saying that this guy died during the riots no he, he died like eight hours afterward don't get me wrong this was really screwed up that it had to happen but let's not act like these guys killed someone i see padilla then 40 of cleveland tennessee is accused of fighting officers at the barricade later threw a flagpole at a group of law enforcement oh no he threw a flagpole Oh, no. Was it one of those ones sharpened into spears? God, I hate hearing that from these people on YouTube where it's like, oh, they had flagpoles sharpened like spears. That was that jackass dressed like an Indian with his war bonnet and his buffalo headdress and all that crap. I mean, come on. No one was running around with spears on that day attacking people. So he was arrested in Georgia. He was served a superseding indictment in November and has a status Hearing in the case is set for January 26th. Head was charged in connection with two other men, 
Ewan Kyle Young, 37, and Thomas Sibkick, 35, of Buffalo, New York. Prosecutors say Young was among the mob supporting Trump who dragged Metropolitan Police Officer Michael Fennanon into a crowd during the attack, shocked him with a stun gun, stole his bad radio and ammunition. Young is accused of trying to take his service weapon. Hmm. Let's read this again. Stun gun, badge, radio, and ammunition. I don't see anything there by 9mm. Mm-hmm, sure. Okay, yeah, he's trying to take his gun. Yeah, I'll believe that if he had it on him. You can't charge someone if they didn't actually take the weapon. That's just stupid. It'll probably be dropped. It's like the Kyle Rittenhouse case. All that stuff was dropped against that kid because it was all bullshit. Anyway, Head faces several charges, including assault, resisting, or impeding officers, and use of a deadly or dangerous weapon. He was also served a superseding indictment on... Uh, more severe charges in December. Head remains in custody as the court process continues. Whatever happened to the right to a speedy trial? These guys, some of them, of them have been in jail since January of last year. Twelve months of being locked up. They've seen a judge a couple of times, maybe, but some of these people were locked up for six or seven months, detained, tortured by the prison guards, the jail officers, what have you. Um, I believe it was actually John Schaefer, the guitarist from Ice Earth, who said that the officers would routinely beat him. I believe one of the other inmates of that facility threw fecal matter at him, and when he brought it up to the officers, they did nothing. They laughed at him. They thought it was funny. Yeah, getting shit slung at you is real funny. <clears throat> that's a, Especially with COVID, you know, that's a, literally a biological attack. People are getting charged in states around America with coughing on people as some type of bioterrorism, but hey, this guy can get shit thrown at him, and that's perfectly fine. Here we go. This one's interesting. The Cleveland Grover Meredith, 53, from Atlanta. He pleaded guilty to a federal charge after an FBI investigation found he threatened to kill Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi after the riots. Did he threaten to do it before? Did he threaten to do it while he was on the property? No, no. After the riots. That's what's key here. Mm-hmm. I find that interesting. So obviously he didn't find her and he was probably frustrated and waited till he got home to say it. Why not say it at the Capitol? I think that would actually be a legitimate threat if he's on the grounds where Nancy's hiding or wherever the hell she went. Fun fact, AOC said she was there with Nancy, but that's bullshit. Uh, Katie Porter's office is literally six blocks away and AOC was in her office. Yeah, AOC came out with a lot of fun stories about how she was hiding and and Katie Porter obviously didn't know what AOC was trying to do or maybe didn't hear about this because she came out and was like, no, no, me and AOC were in the office all day. I wasn't in danger. We were literally like almost a mile away from the Capitol. Everything was fine. So not many people know that. And whenever you get a relative who's pro AOC or anyone who's saying that these people were threatened, be sure to bring up AOC because that's a fun one where she said she was literally at the Capitol and her lies have been disproven numerous times by her own colleagues by her own party members. Let's get back to Meredith here. Officers found a Glock 19, a 9mm pistol, a Tabor X95 rifle, and hundreds of rounds of ammunition in his truck and trailer, court documents show. All right. That's pretty hefty. Serious threat. Now, let me ask you this. Was the truck and trailer found in the city limits of D.C.? Probably not, because they would have mentioned that in the article. A lot of the weapons these um, federal agents retrieved were literally at these people's houses. Now, I am glad this is a Tennessee article and also people from Georgia because that kind of shows that these people went to the Capitol with no weapons, no guns. I mean, how can you have an insurrection, an unarmed insurrection? That's, that's, that's hilarious. You can't have an insurrection without guns. You're going to take on the world's most powerful military with a couple of sharpened flagpoles, a pair of brass knuckles, and a baton or two with some stun guns? I mean... That's, that's ridiculous. That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. And I would have found these claims of an insurrection more palpable, more realistic, if they would have had weapons on their person when they were arrested. None were. None, no weapons were retrieved on D.C. that day. Look it up. If you can shift through all the bullshit CNN and MSNBC and the rest of the mainstream media is feeding you, you'll get to the truth. And if you look through articles like this and you use a little bit of critical thinking, you can deduce that there really wasn't much of a threat that day. Anyway, it says here that he pleaded guilty to one charge of interstate threats. He threatened Nancy Pelosi, September. He was sentenced to 28 months in prison with credit for time served to be followed by 36 months of supervised probation. He was also ordered to pay 100 bucks. That's another thing I've noticed, is a lot of these are trespassing charges, and most people are paying 100 or 500 or or $1,000. It's literally not that bad, and everyone's letting you know that is the most dangerous attack of all time, and yet the fine for 
trying to take down the U.S. government's literally $100 to $500. You get a bigger fine than that jaywalking across the damn street. I know. I had to contest a uh, jaywalking charge in Irvine a few years back. They're trying to get me for $550 or $600 for crossing the street legally. The bimbo who filmed me, the officer, filmed me crossing the street legally when the little uh, white hand was blinking, you know, that you, gives you permission to cross the street. She, thank God she wasn't smart enough to review her dash cam footage because she could have got me. I would have got a ticket. I would have got a $550, $600 fine. And I would have been screwed. But she actually played the video in front of the judge, and the judge like, no crimes here is committed. You know, you can go. And I was like, wow, I actually won a court case. Not only that, I actually beat Irvine. Not many people have done that. So I like to brag about that when I get a chance to. But we're not talking about jaywalking. No, we're talking about January 6th. We're shoving matches and fist fights were the rule of the day. The true means of terror have never been seen on this earth. It sounds like a drunken bar brawl. It's ridiculous. Portlock faces charges on allegations he pushed and moved barriers, assaulted officers, and joined a mob yelling heave-ho. Yes, heave-ho! As they pushed into a tunnel on the Capitol's lower west terrace. He pushed some barricades over. He pushed an officer to and he yelled heave-ho. Oh, boy, that's a real act of terror right there. Oh, boy. Oh, gosh, it's so ridiculous. It just makes you laugh when you go through all these charges. I'm I'm not even in the tip of the iceberg. I'm not trying to make this a half an hour video, but my God, this is just too funny. I'm going to speed it up, though. Nicholas Brockoff, the youngest of those Tennessee Connections charged, is also accused of assaulting a police officer. Okay. It says here that he was 20 at the time of the riots, was arrested in May, and died in August, and he has remained in custody ever since May for the 25th. See, this is what I was talking about with the speedy trial thing. They're not respecting the Constitution. These trials are being dragged out. It's absolutely pathetic. Here's another one. The zip tie guy, Nashville Barber Munchel, 1030, went to D.C. with his mother, Lisa Eisenhart, from Woodstock, Georgia. Munchel was arrested on January 10th. He was released to home arrest since September. He's been ordered to spend house arrest at his brother's apartment in Nashville. Eisenhart was released to house arrest in March after legal wrangling over the jail conditions where she was held in D.C., well, I'm glad that they let the elderly out of jail. I think, what was she, 66 or something? What did it say here? 56. Well, that's not exactly old, but this is what proves my point about the jail conditions. They were letting the fellow inmates just beat these people up. And in the case of John Schaefer, they were literally letting people throw shit at him. It was messed up. It was despicable. It was disgusting. Although the pair were originally seen as emblematic of the violent threats made that day, they've been charged more in line with others who seem to rush in with the crowd. Oh, but I skipped the most important part. Investigators said the pair brought firearms with them to D.C. Yes. Video footage reviewed by the FBI indicated that they may have stashed the weapons on the grounds of the Capitol before entering the building. See, CNN, you almost had me. You almost converted me to your line of thinking because they brought the deadly guns with them. But they stashed them before going in the Capitol building? Has these weapons ever been retrieved? Has any weapon that was not issued to the Metropolitan Police Department been retrieved from the Capitol grounds after this event? That's what you must ask yourselves because this is just ridiculous. It's stupid. The dumbest. Who wrote this? You know, I could write better than this. They face mainly trespassing charges along with the list to the charge of violent entry. Blah, 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 set for March. Okay, and they're still on house arrest. Well, at least they're home. I guess I'll give them that. Bledshow, Reed, Torrens, and Griffith were all spotted together inside the building. Bledshow shot video of himself wearing a U.S. flag gator, walking through the outer door of the Capitol, and posted on social media the FBI states an arrest complaint. Trespassing. Torrens, then 28, appeared in an Instagram video with Bledshow and Griffith, then 28, as they appeared to enter the Capitol. Trespassing. A photograph provided by a tipster in the blood show case showed him with another man in distinctive ski goggles and respirator. Letter identifies Reed. It is unclear how old blood show was at the time. On guilty conviction for violent entry and disorderly conduct, Torrance was sent in October to 36 months probation on home. Detention ordered to pay $10. Oh my goodness. $10 for trying to destroy America. I mean, come on. This is just getting stupid. And then a $500 restitution fine common in many of the cases. This is what's funny. They're really just shaking these people down, getting a couple hundred here and there from people that are, you know, already been in prison for almost a year now, in most cases, a year. Read then 35 scheduled for a plea hearing on January 11th. The next hearing in Bledsoe's case is 21st. In October, Griffith was sentenced to 36 months probation, 90 days of home confinement. He was also ordered to pay $500 in restitution. Where are those insurrection charges? Why isn't there a gallows set up with nooses? You know, CNN, you claim that these guys were trying to blow up the building and burn it down and kill everyone in the building and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Bullshit. Baggett, then 27. Oh, that's an unfortunate name. 
and Parks and 28 were also charged together. A status hearing. No one proves read the writing anymore. Is set for January 18th. The pair reported you saw it on security footage taken inside the Capitol. Parks also allegedly picked up and walked out of the building with a handheld metal detector wand. Oh no, he stole. Mm -hmm. A lot of that, that was another thing. A lot of these people, like one guy stole the podium that Nancy speaks off of. Another guy went in Nancy Pelosi's office and literally kicked his feet up on the desk. I think he took something from her desk. I think it was like a paperweight or something. And he left like five bucks on the desk with a note saying that here, you know, like I paid for it. And he got charged with theft and they made him pay like a couple hundred dollars for a stupid five dollar paperweight. It's ridiculous. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm no advocate of theft. The BLM and the Antifa, all those idiots doing smash and grabs and all the uh, crime going on in California. I denounce that wholeheartedly. But I mean, if the guy paid for a five dollar paperweight, why are you going to charge him a couple hundred and give him a felony for theft or something? It's ridiculous. But not insurrection. Ronnie B. Presley down here, 42, of Beth Page, Tennessee, was arrested in Old Hickory on March 6th. Presley's charges include obstruction of justice, obstruction of law enforcement during civil disorder, entering or remaining on the restricted grounds, violent entry, and disorderly conduct for his alleged actions during a riot. Let's see what it said. Photos and court documents show Presley standing at a door holding on the top of a riot shield. See, either this guy was a massive dick in the courtroom or they just really wanted to stick it with them with a laundry list of charges that everyone else got, but few are sticking on. Like I said, mostly mostly trespassing. But, you know, a riot shield, you know, for defense, not offense. Can't kill anyone with the riot shield. I mean, we've seen that in the Antifa marches and protests and all the burnings they did in January. I'm sorry, July 2020. Anyway, Ivy then 28 was arrested on March 4th in Cookville. The Crossville man was caught on camera outside the Capitol as rioters broke windows and inside after the building was breached. Hmm. Why isn't anyone on this list charged with breaking out the windows? Why have numerous people have identified these individuals on Facebook that broke the windows out and those people were let go? Is it possibly because they have ties to Antifa, ties to BLM? There were a lot of agitators in the crowd who were not on our side. I can't go into detail because then the video will get pulled because of disinformation. I'm just reading the news as it comes. And I'm giving my spin on it. That's what America's all about, freedom of speech. If the YouTube doesn't like it, they can go fuck themselves. Anyway, I could keep going here. If you want to read some of these, you can pause the video and do so. But, I mean, look at this guy. He was spotted praying inside the Senate. Roche, 26, of Murfreesboro. He was charged with seven misdemeanor counts related to his alleged entrance into the Capitol building. Was one of those praying inside a government building? Because, I mean, what the hell? And he was spotted next to the QAnon jackass, an Arizona man known for dressing up like an Indian. Oh, strident far-right views. Dude, far-right views. This guy requested a vegan meal during his jail while he was being held in jail. Oh, that's very far-right. We all know that Trump and everyone else, we all eat our veggies. We denounce our starches. We don't eat that beef. We don't eat that chicken. No, where's my Beyond Beef? Yeah, don't eat that Beyond Beef. Anyway, Tennessee man Sandlin, then 31, was arrested in Nevada, charged with two others, trying to raise money on GoFundMe. Oh, no, he tried to raise money. He was caught in footage being cleared out of the building. Okay, so he was fighting an officer from a doorway. Oh, boy, you know. I could, uh, I could, I could go on. I could go on. This guy climbed out of a broken window. Oh, goodness, you know. Oh, thank God we're actually done with the article. Well, I didn't want this video to drag on too long, so I'm just going to cut it here. But after you do a little of your research of your own, um, it becomes blatantly clear that no one's been charged with insurrection. And when your relatives come at you, please use these facts to rebuff their ridiculous claims because we all know the truth of what happened that day. It was a peaceful protest that went wrong. But unlike the peaceful protest, quote unquote, the CNN talks about throughout 2020 and the numerous cities across America, this was mostly peaceful. Some shit was stolen. People trespassed. A man prayed at the altar of the Senate, but, you know, no one died except for people on our side. That poor Air Force veteran, I believe, I'm trying to remember her name, but she died when she got shot at by a bunch of jackasses who were taken cover by a turned over table. This woman didn't even have a gun. I mean, we've seen numerous pictures of older women holding flags and banners walking in the Capitol building. It looked like a lost tourist group. I mean, these people, it wasn't that bad. They even stayed inside the lines after the Metro police. I think what had happened was a lot of the police let these people through, and then the few cops who decided to fight back, that's where the problems happened. But again, 
not insurrection. All right, I hope you guys can survive the media bombardment of misinformation, disinformation, and all the stupid relatives who will come at you giving you shit for being a Republican after this dastardly attack on America. Because remember, this wasn't as bad as 9-11. It really wasn't. But they're going to tell you that it was the worst terror attack of all time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like. Comment down below what you think. All right, everyone, take care and have a lovely St. Patriot's Day.